Hi guys, welcome to my Etsy listing tips tutorial part two. Thank you for watching the second video. The first video I explain how I do my research for keywords for all my Etsy listings using Etsy rank. So make sure that you look at that video first. It will help you find the keywords or strategies that I use. This part of the tutorial, I will walk you through a process of, of adding the keywords to an actual listing, how to properly um, word your titles, where to put your keywords in the description, what to include in the description, and much more, like the shipping fees, how to find categories, how to calculate the cost of an item. So this will help you walk you through the whole process of creating a listing. And the main reason why I decided to create a series of XE tutorials is because I know how difficult it can be to start your own Etsy business. My first year on Etsy, after many trials and failures, um, I have been able to achieve 20000 in sales. However, I did make a lot of mistakes in the beginning and found it somewhat difficult when researching information on running a successful Etsy shop. Um, a lot of blogs and YouTube had tons of fluff material that really didn't help me much. They gave me the basics of what I knew already that I needed to do, but they didn't really show me tools or things that I should do or strategies. And I took it upon myself that if I was to become successful in XE, I would at least create tutorials to help other XE sellers in finding their success. Um, this XE tutorial will be broken down into sections. I will be revealing all of my tactics and showing you exactly what I do when I create a listing from scratch. So because we already did the SEO um, part of it, we're gonna run. We're gonna jump into creating the listing now. So if you were to go to your Etsy shop and you were to create a listing, this is where the page will pop up. So the first part is adding your images. So if you want to make sure that the first picture is, is considered a grabber shot. And it should be the best picture of your item. The additional images should reflect the different angles, detail of the item, an image in use, size and scale, um, style seen, and variations of your item. So, you know, some tips to follow is use natural light, no flash. Include a common object for scale so people can know, like, relatively what size that is. If you're selling, like, a t-shirt or something, show the item been, um, worn or use and show against a clear simple background so just make sure that there's no clutter it's a clear background people are not getting distracted looking at the background if you are selling a tangible item um, another thing to consider is getting a light box and basically the the light box is considered it, it's, it's like um it's a clean background and it has the perfect bright image without any shadows. So it's like a little box that has lights inside of it. And it actually, you could just Google it. Or if you go to Amazon, you, you could find them relatively cheap, to be honest. But this is what a light box is. And you will put your product in there. And then you could take a picture, whether it's with the iPhone or with a regular camera. It doesn't have to be anything expensive. But it does make a difference because now you have a clear background. And then you have the, the picture and focus of whatever you're selling. Um, so it's a good way to showcase your item. Now, if you're using, let's say, for instance, you're selling digital prints like I do, I would um, go to creativemarket.com. is one of my uh, favorite places to go to. And you could actually find mock-ups. Um, to showcase your items so i sell a lot of wedding stationary stuff for weddings so you could go in here and look up wedding mock-ups i also provide an example in um in my blog post as well but you could go in here for instance this one's a really nice one and you could actually buy this and you could display let's say i was doing table numbers i will be able to use a software such as photoshop and put my digital print that I'm selling in this frame and showcase it as a picture. So if you're doing digital prints, this is the best route to go. 
buying these sort of mock-ups. If, if you're doing a t-shirt lineup as well, it's another great example because if you don't have the investment right now to pay models to wear your t-shirts or find people to wear your t-shirts, you can actually buy a t-shirt mock-up here and they have um, females, male, and basically you could upload your design and you could showcase a mock-up of your shirt at your store. So it's just another route that you could go that you could still showcase your items um, with necessarily not spending too much money. This is only $12. You could upload your image. It will pop up and then you could use that as your listing image in Xy. So this is to give you another another way that you could showcase your images. So basically, you go back to the listing and you go ahead and put the mock-up. So I already have like three that I created really quick for my store. So you upload them. I do, I always tell people, if, especially if you're send, selling something tangible, try to use all 10 pictures. Um, it's a little bit harder with digital prints because you only have so many ways to put them. However, another trick for digital prints is that you could add additional pictures and say matching items and add those additional items that match that photo guest book. That way, if someone is browsing, they could say, oh, they have matching items. Um, and I need this one, this one, and this one. So let me go ahead and buy all of them. So that's another way that you could showcase your items. But I would I would suggest to use all 10 if you can. So once you put your image, the next step is the listing description. So I'm sorry, the listing title. So the listing title, what I tend to do is I'll put in all my keywords here. I know a lot of people will put Polaroid guest book instant download, 8 by 10, 11 by 14 inches, download now, and so on. I tend to kind of disagree and agree. I do like the fact that, you know, you should describe your product in the title and explain what you're getting. But what I found is that putting all my keywords here work a lot better and I, I actually um, used to do that before, describe what I was adding. And I noticed that once I changed that and I put all my keywords, um, it actually increased my views and my traffic. So now what I do is I tend to put um, all my green keywords that we did earlier, the research. I put all the green keywords at first, as many as I, as I could fit. And then I put all my yellow keywords at the end. So... You know, Xy recommends the title to be at least 60 characters long with the most important keywords in the front. So I always try to put the green ones in the front because those are the ones that I'm most likely going to rank for because there's less competition with them. Um, and they have most influence on SEO and clicks. So you want to make sure you put those in the front. You're not going to be able to add all 13 keywords in here only because it only it limits your characters. But try to get as many as you can. So as you see here, I put as many as I could. The second one, the second um, section of this part is the about this listing. So in this section, um, you're going to describe who made the item. So if you did the item, then you will create I did. If a member of your shop did it, then you would put a member of the shop. And if it was like a, another company or like a production partner, you will need to put that as well. Keep in mind that if you aren't working with a production company or a production partner, you will need to make sure that you disclose that or every person involved in the making of the handmade item in the about section of your shop. You need to disclose that. So if you made that item, you click I did. It's going to ask you if it's a finished product or tool or supply to make. So for instance, mine is the finished product. And then you will pick the year that it was made. So for instance, this was just made obviously two days ago. So I will pick obviously 2010 to 2017. However, let's say you're selling a vintage item, then you would need to select what year that item was produced. So it depends on what you're selling, but for in my instance, it will be here. Now, category is basically um, another way that people search for items. So, 
you want to make sure that in the category section, this is where XC rank category tool comes in handy because you can briefly describe what you're selling and it will auto populate suggestions for you. So let's say you don't know where to put this guest book. You're like, I don't know if I should put it on paper and party supplies. Maybe it's weddings. Maybe it's arts and collectibles. And then you could go to prints and then select digital print. So you kind of confuse on where to put it at. So what you would do is you go to XE rank, you log in into your account, and then you go to category tool, which is right here. And then right here will pop up and you will enter the name of your product. So I will put here guest Polaroid book. And then I click look up. And then this is going to give me like a, a suggestion of where I should place the item under what category. So it's basically telling me I should put it on the weddings, decorations, and signs. 46% of people, or that's the like a percentage of people that actually put it there. So that's where I actually was going to do it because obviously it's for weddings and it's a sign. So it does make sense to put it there. Um, so if you're not 100% sure where to put it at, this is where you want to go. This is the first option I was looking at, and look at the, the percentage is 2%. Like, so 2% of people might put it there. This is the better option. So this is where I want to put my item. So I will go back here, and I will select Weddings, Decorations, and Signs. So that kind of helps you and put it in the right track for people to find your product. So now you're done with Category. The next section would be... And it actually puts it here as well on occasion. It will add it to wedding automatically. So that's a nice thing. This is optional. Um, you could do it or not do it. I actually um, do it depending on what I'm doing. So for this sign, the primary color is like a burgundy. Sometimes it's a little bit hard because the colors are not necessarily here. So because they're not here, I always leave. I usually leave it blank. If it's a specific color, then I would put it in there, but a lot of times this doesn't match with what I'm selling, so I usually leave it at blank. And the next option, or the next part of this tutorial, is whether you're going to choose to renew the listing automatic or manually. So each renewal, just keep in mind, lasts for four months, or until the listing sells out. So... For my situation, in order to save time, I usually set it up automatically by default. And I also recommend you setting up setting it up renewal automatic unless you have unlimited stock. Unless you have limited stock on that particular item. So for instance, since I sell digital prints, all of my listings are set to renew automatically because it does take me a little longer to create on the on the front on the front part of it, but then I could sell that unlimited that digital print unlimited times. So from my end, I always do it automatically because I'm always gonna have that product to be able to give to the person. However, if you are selling something like a purse and you currently have two available and it takes it's a process to create that purse then most likely it would not be a good option to put it automatic because if it takes you, let's say, I don't know, a month to create the item and somebody ends up buying an ex like they end up buying the two that you had left and then now someone else buys another one and it takes you a month but your shipping policy says two weeks, then you're going to run into that issue there. So it depends on what you're selling. If you have a lot of products on it, I would say automatically is the way to go. Then you don't forget. You don't have to worry about missing a sale. If you don't have that product, I would say do it manually. Just be aware of always checking your listing, being on top of your store, being responsible, and updating it as soon as you have the new um, inventory. So I normally put automatic. Now here, it, it was going to ask you in this section if it's a physical item, which means that you're going to ship that to the buyer. Or if it's a digital item, which means that the person will download um, as a digital file. So like my prints are considered a digital download. So I will click here. 
If you are selling a physical item, obviously you will click on a physical. So, so we got at least half of the listing already created. The next part is the description listing. So here is the part that I always tell people it plays a big role whether you make the sale or not. You need to make sure that you're writing a killer item description. Um, you need to make sure that, for instance, for a lot of my wedding signs, um, I display like a, a picture of like a easel with the, with the actual wedding sign. You have to be as clear as possible in your description of what they're getting, what comes included, and that way to confuse it, that way to avoid any confusions. So I will always, you know, in my listings, I always mention the listing props and frames are not included with the purchase. And then I clearly describe it in the, in the description. However, you will get some people once in a while that will email you and say, Hey, does that frame come with it? Or, Hey, does that easel come with it? Um, Try not to get frustrated. It's just a part of of selling online, and for a lot of buyers, it can be it can be confusing because when they're looking at the mockup of the product, they assume that what they're looking at comes with it. So if they're looking at a a digital print that I'm selling that actually has a a, a picture frame, they think that they're getting the picture frame and the actual listing they're getting both in reality they're not they just this is just a mock-up to show how it would look on a black frame basically so you have to make sure that you are very specific in breaking it down so what i try to do in my listing description is that i try to include what they're buying how they will receive their digital product our mission printing process refund exchanges and terms of use so that way there's no confusion it builds credibility and it really helps you close out the sale and it eliminates them it eliminates buyers emailing you and asking you tons of questions because you already have an outline of exactly everything they need to know um occasionally you will still get an email regardless but it will be fewer emails so that kind of helps so how I like to do my listings, this is the strategy that I use. Some people might agree with this, some people might not, but this is what works for me. Is the same keywords that I put up here, I copy and paste here, and then I finish by adding all 13 keywords. So basically, I will do all my green keywords in the front, and then all the yellow ones in the back. As you can see, Principal Guestbook is the last yellow one, and it's right there. So I put all my keywords in the first paragraph of the listing description. And then I put, I break it down in sections. So I will put description and I put Polaroid guest book sign because that's where they're buying. I always try to put in here, no physical product will be shipped. Framing props are not included. You can also put no, um, no item will be shipped. This is a digital product. Frames and props are not included. However you want to word it, just make sure that you do word it. Then you want to break it down in what's included. So for instance, this actual posting, you will receive four different sizes. 